Dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful for your goodness unto us once again. Father, you see the occasion for which we have gathered tonight, dear Lord. Father, we appreciate the life of our beloved sister, dear Father. The life that she lived was faithful and true to God. And Father, what an influence and an example she has been to all of us, dear Father, dear God. Father, we're so thankful that that legacy can live on. That, dear Father, we've had the privilege, dear Lord, to witness it. Father, we pray, dear Lord, that you would bless her memory tonight, dear Father. May it uh, comfort and bless the family, dear Father, in this time of loss, dear Father. Dear Lord, comfort and bless our pastor, dear Father, in a special way. Father, we do pray, dear Lord, that it would uh, comfort the saints tonight, dear Lord, and encourage us, dear Father, to keep going on for God and, dear Father, to live faithfully, dear Father, that we too may make heaven our home. Father, we appreciate all that you've done, and Father... In all things, we give you thanks and glory and honor, and we ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. May be seated. Most of us who go to the congregation here, we know this as one of Sister Hampton's favorite songs. She'd always rejoice on <laughs>
custom is we're going to open it up. Not a program, but open it up to all those in the audience if you'd like to come and share reflection on our dear, beloved mother, church mother, community leader, down for many decades, gave many young people in the community their first haircut, employed people, did so many things to touch so many, and she was just so, so full of life and so real. I was telling my father, coming through that office, it's still even difficult. I'm expecting to see her, you know, and she was just so, so full, you know, she would, um, and I don't know, those that may know her a little better, you would know that she's very sober and serious, but man, she was funny. I mean, she would take a, a moment that would be so tense and do something to just bring the whole thing down. She would show us that side, that, that sense of humor, you know, that she had, just kept it real, you know. Even I remember when she came back from her honeymoon, and I'm thinking, like you said, Sister Robinson Hampton, I would be, you know, altar worker, this, that, and the other, but she would say stuff and just have you laughing and take that heaviness out of the moment. And I look over there, I remember just like it was yesterday, seven, eight years ago, I'm reading, they came back off the honeymoon, and she's sitting in the front, well, this is, now this Sister Hampton, that work altars and cast demons out and pray sicknesses away and up, She's sitting there holding Brother Hampton's hand in the front row. I looked at that, man, it was just, I didn't expect it. So she had a romantic side, and I don't know what all took place, but she came back, they came off the honeymoon, he was happy. <laughs> you know? but, but, but any story that you may have, hey amen, I'm not going to go too far with it, but any story that you may have regarding Sister Hampton, please come and share with the family and with the church family as well. Microphone to my right. Take your liberty. Do actually the limit it to two minutes. We open the floor up at this time. Um, appreciate my stepmom. I, I met her when I was in the fifth grade. And her, she had a son, Lorenzo, here. He was in the sixth grade. We both, you know, played basketball. And uh, him and I have been close ever since then, and our families have been super close because of her, you know, and even to this day, you know, me and him have a, we don't see each other as often as we did back then, but there's a bond there, you know, and, and there's a bond that she nurtured, you know, and, and uh, I really appreciate the times that I would spend at her house back when I was a youngster, you know, and I'm going to tell my side of the story, I'm sure the will probably tell a different version, but we used to, me and my brother Lyle, we would go on Saturday mornings and we would play Lorenzo and KP, 2 on 2 basketball. I don't recall them ever beating us. But, like I said, that's my version. But, but, but anyway, after we would play, we would be out there, you know, sometime it might be cold, it was summertime, whatever. That whenever KP was in town, we were going to play this 2 on 2. But afterwards, we would go inside and she would make us these big old stacks of pancakes. And this was back when we was five, fifth, sixth, seventh grade, you know, and that just bonded me to her, not knowing that one day we would be family, you know, and I appreciate that so much. And the morning that uh, of her death, we were at the house, and I asked him about Lorenzo, I said, when is he coming? You know, he came, I wanted to console him, I didn't know what state of mind he'd be in, you know, so I, I came to him, and I was sort of like a heavy, and he told me, he says, man, he says, I'm just glad that she died the way she lived. You know, and that meant so much to me. That was so powerful to hear him say that. It was like a testimony to the life that she lived, you know. And I thought about that, and that, that moved me, you know. And the thing that I'm taking from her is when you mention her name, what comes to my mind is a meek and humble spirit. She's done a lot of things. She was a barber, but that's not what comes to my mind. And she did a lot of things in the community, and she had a funny side to it. But when you speak about Sister Robinson Hampton, I think about that meek and humble spirit. I want to be known, not for anything else, but the attributes of a true saint of God. And I appreciate and I credit her for inspiring me in that way. Yeah. I know she was asking me to come on my own. So I would 
how clean the charge is, and, and, you know, just go on about my business. And one day, I was here for church early. I was in the ladies' room, and Sister Robinson at the time came to me, and she was just being so careful how she spoke to me, and she said, Sister Dorinda, that soft soap you're using to clean the sinks, they don't want you to use it. And I'm thinking, well, come on, tell me, what, what is it you're trying to say? You know, she's taking her time. So when she finally said it, I said, oh, okay, no problem. And then she looked like she wanted to say something else, so I paused and thought, what, what else? You know, she said, so you can take it home. <laughs> and I laughed, I said, Sister Robinson, I didn't buy that. It was here. She said, it was? Who bought it? I said, I don't know, but it was underneath the sink, so I used it, you know. And so she was like, oh, and it's like she just, it just relieved her to where she felt like she could relax with me. She didn't have to try and be so careful, but that was one thing about her. She wanted to be careful that she spoke without offending and that kind of thing. And I had to laugh at her way back. I remember when Mia graduated from high school and they had asked me to do a banner for her graduation. So I came out to, I believe it was Chalet Terrace where we had the open house. And I went out there early to put the banner up. So I put that banner up and she was there and the girl's daddy, he was there too. I think he was outside doing something, but when I finished, I was, uh, I was about to go and I thought, well, I'm gonna go and then I'm gonna come back later for the open house. So I told her, okay, I'm leaving. She said, you leaving? I said, yeah. She said, can you stay around here? I said, why didn't you even stay? She said, I don't want to be alone with him. <laughs> I was like, Sister Robinson, for real, you know. Like he's going to try something. She said, girl, you never know what the devil's going to do. <laughs> and I thought that was funny, you know. But I stayed just to make her feel good about it. And I just want to say, you know, in the church of God, we have a standard of holiness. And she upheld it. And you know, I came here and I just wanted this gospel and nothing mattered to me. I didn't care how I had to dress, whatever. I wanted to look like a saint. One thing I can say about her, she dressed like a saint. She looked like a saint. You never call her being provocative in any way. And I just, I just thank God for it. And even when the pastor became eligible over nine years ago, I think it was, and there were many, you know, many people wondering who he's going to choose. And she was just, just kept her quietness and her piety, you know, and never did anything. You wouldn't see her up in the space. You wouldn't see her do anything. And when he made his announcement, I imagine there were a lot of jaws dropping <laughs> because they would never imagine. Sisters, I, I, I've said it before, you know, we need to learn. We could use her for an example of staying in our place, quietly praying and trusting. And God will bless you. He blessed her. And we thank God for her. I'm going to say something. Um, I knew Sister Robson. To me, she's always going to be Sister Robson because we met, we were th I was three years old, Michelle was probably three, Mia was one, Lorenzo, Lorna, Ditto, they weren't even married, they were teenagers still. So we came to the church and in some kind of way our parents just kind of clicked. She kind of became like that other mother. Um, she was 10 years older than my mother so she was more seasoned in the faith and all that good stuff. Um, I'm a little nervous. It's bittersweet to me because when you grow up Church of God, you see a lot of people come and you see them go. And she was one of those who stayed the same from the moment I met her.
to the time she took her last breath. Um, Michelle and Mia were more like my sisters. We did pretty much everything together. Um, both of our parents were single. At, at a certain point, they were single parents. Um, we were poor. <laughs> we didn't have a lot. But that gave us a, a bond that you can't replace in a million years. You couldn't replace that bond because if we had, they had. If they had, we had. And we walked, um, we would walk up to Francis Street and we would spend countless hours with them. And they'd come to our house and we'd play dials together. We'd spend many, many hours playing dials while our parents, my mother, Sister Credit, and Sister Robinson, would either be counseling with each other or praying something through or cooking. Um, she taught my mother. Actually, she's the one who taught my mom how to make those wonderful sweet potato pies. Sister Robinson was an awesome cook. I remember she was babysitting us one time, and she, I said, I want some candy. My mother had an avid sweet tooth. She always had candy. For whatever reason that time, we didn't have any candy in the house. She got down in that kitchen and she made some candy homemade. And I was just like ecstatic about that. Like, wow, this lady knows how to make candy homemade. Little did I realize it was just butter and sugar and some water and brown sugar and you kind of just let it harden. But we came through a lot of different phases in life. Um, I remember when she went on a trip with us one time and we were all in the hotel sleep. And at about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, she woke up. Well, she wasn't awake. I thought she was awake. And she just started saying, get back, get back, get back. And then the whole room just like erupted like, what is going on? And she was still sound asleep. And so my mom called her name. She says, Travis. And she woke up. She said, was I fighting the devil? <laughs> And she got up and went to the bathroom. She said, I have to fight the devil in my sleep. <laughs> uh, we came through the phase of the screaming Mimi's when her leg was had a rash. We didn't know what it was, but she called it the screaming Mimi's. And we got through that phase. We got through the phase where, I'm going to go back a little bit. We had a station wagon. She had a station wagon. And it had a hole in the floor. And we drove that thing all the way to Oklahoma. I, knew, I think we could have died because like, the exhaust was coming into the car. But they just lived by faith. They didn't, they didn't doubt that God would take us to Oklahoma. So that was pretty much our lives. And I remember one time she told me that she, um, one of the things that she had given up when she first got saved was roller skating. And I had gotten a pair of skates. And she instructed me and helped me learn how to roller skate and um, just so many memories. I can't pack 44 years of memories into two minutes, but she was an awesome lady. I love her, loved her dearly. I loved her daughters. We, um, we had a bond. And one thing that I can say about her, just to conclude her life, she found the answer. She learned to pray. And she taught us how to pray. And she would always, you would go to her for counsel and you would ask her questions. And she would just say, we're going to pray about it. And you would want her to talk, like, tell me something. But she would just say, we're going to pray about it. And that was her life. And we're going to miss her. Papa, you won't get no more. <laughs> and I just, I just appreciate you. I appreciate you staying. I thank God for the Church of God. Good job. Difficult transition to go from calling her Sister Robinson to Sister Anthony, but it was a seemingly seamless transition. I've stayed in the Hampton home for multiple years now. Thank God for their hospitality. If I could share three things, try to keep my thoughts organized here. Uh, one was that Sister. Robinson Hampton was peaceful. And you can tell even tonight, you did a wonderful job. She was looking very peaceful. 
And that's how she was. Sometimes she used to be sitting up here looking so peacefully. You're wondering if she was awake or not. But rest assured, a, a good, hot, fiery testimony or a good, encouraging song, and she'd erupt into some claps, several claps. And praise God! But she was a very peaceful, peaceful woman. In fact, one time upstairs in prayer service, uh, I believe this was before uh, Brother Hampton married her, I uh, think she was on the front row, sitting peacefully, and he was going forth in his, his exhortations. You all who have been to the morning prayer service know those exhortations get real, real hot and fiery there. And, uh, and he said something to the effect of, Robinson, wake up. And she said something like, uh, I am away. <laughs> so then Brother Hampton says, see, I, I got to be careful waking up saints because they're going to tell something that's not true as of you. <laughs> she was very peaceful. She also was, was very tender. I had this uh, the privilege of taking her to service one morning, uh, probably within the past couple of months. I, I'd have to look on my calendar to see exactly when it was, if I can trace it down. But as we were in the vehicle, she said um, something like, God's not talking to me. And you know, hey, I'm just a young brother, and this is, this is Sister Hampton Robinson. Wait, what's happening here? And she just kind of opened up and said, I, you know, maybe she's been praying or whatever and wasn't getting a response. But she, from what I can remember, I think she went on to service and the Lord snapped her out of that and it wasn't long before she was back rejoicing. But I just, I thought that was so, as Brother, Brother Frank said, she was humble and meek that she would even say that. You know, we, someone whom we hold in such high regard for her to even utter those words. I thought, well, Lord, I'm okay, I'm not totally, you know, sometimes we have those moments where we're looking for an answer from God. And she was willing to share that. And then also I'd like to share a morning breakfast with Brother Hampton. Now, Brother Hampton is military, so I mean, come up from Ohio and I'm tired and stayed up late with the young people potentially or whatever and get back and Seem like I'm just getting to sleep, and then all of a sudden it's about 4.30 in the morning, and here, here comes Brother Hampton down the stairs, creaking down the stairs and, and whipping up breakfast. And it won't be long before I hear the call. Margaret! Margaret! Come on, breakfast is ready. Age, age. Come on, come on, we, we, we gotta get breakfast. We gotta get going, we gotta get going. Like, oh, man, I'm just getting to sleep. What are you talking about getting going? <laughs> So we'd get up and we'd have breakfast, but he was so affectionate, so tender. He, I mean, he had all these different names. You know, I'm like, you know, I'm just trying to sit at the table and eat breakfast. You know what I'm saying? What you need, sugar? What you need? Uh, <laughs> just trying to eat. But he was, they, were, they were so uh, fitting with each other. So therefore, I will definitely miss her. I will miss getting locked out of the house. And I will call ahead with Brother Hampton's sister Marcina and arrange to stay with them. And for whatever reason, the message wouldn't get transferred to Sister Robinson Hampton. So by the time I get there, the door will be locked. Thank God for Brother Nathan and for others who let me stay in those situations. Because it'd be pretty late. I didn't feel like waking up a bunch of people. But you know what I'd, I'd give? Uh, I don't know what I'd give to have her lock me out again. Just to, to have her back. I'm going to miss the times when some for uh, at a time I might ask, Sister Robinson, you still kicking her? Sister Hampton, you still kicking up dust? Y'all know how she had that testimony. I started out for God kicking up dust. So I said, you still kicking up dust? And she kind of just laughed at me. I don't even know if she would respond. She just got to laugh at me. But in closing, I'll say that uh, on December 26th, she kicked up dust. One more time and left us in the dust. <laughs> But when the dust settles, by the grace of God, we have to keep on running to catch up. I'm so thankful for this wonderful, wonderful saint of God who has left an indelible mark on my life and on so many others. Family, love you and praying for you. Thank you for sharing it with us. Good evening. I was thinking of a song about, I don't 
remember who recorded it, but it said, I trade a lifetime for one day in paradise. And I was just looking at my sister-in-law. She was married to my brother for a while and had the children and Deanna and Lauren and Lorenzo and Lisa, Michelle and Mia, they were just one big happy family, you know. But I thought about Margaret, you, everything that was said, ditto, ditto, ditto. She was a sober lady. She didn't do a lot of talking. But she was a good lady. She was a good mother. And I remember so vividly when my husband, he passed in 97. And I remember he was, had been in the hospital for quite a while with lung cancer. And you know, sometimes you can minister to everybody, seem like sometimes, but for your own, it's someone else that can get to them and reach them. And I remember she went up to the hospital. I don't know if me and Michelle or Lorna, who was with her, but I remember she came back by the house and she was like, we took Roger through the sinner's prayer and he repented and gave his life to the Lord. And I will never, I will take that to my grave because I was, I had such a grateful heart that she, I didn't even ask her, but that was within me and that was just something that I will never, ever forget. Another thing when he passed, it wasn't the Johnson funeral home then, but when I saw my husband, I was so disappointed because Roger Dodger had a gold cheat and he had his little facial gray hair and he just didn't look to suit me. And Margaret was standing there with me and she was like, don't worry about it, I'll take care of it. And I said, you will? What will you do? She said, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. And when she finished, and when I saw him again, there was my Roger. Had his gold cheese, had his hair. I don't know what she did, but she put a big smile on my face. Those are little things. Nobody knew that. She didn't toot her horn, at least not the Margaret that I knew. But little simple things that will stay with me forever made me so grateful to, to just to have her and know her and love her. I just re, I've just been reminiscing over just the memories down through the years and we weren't in each other's house or face that much. She was here and I was over there. But we were always very, very loving to each other and we cared about each other and I just I know that this is this is what she worked for and like I say the the song says I sure would love to see loved ones who've gone on before and shake hands with the angels the 20 and the four in that holy righteous place I will see my Savior's face I'll trade a lifetime for one day in paradise. Rest in peace, Sister Margaret. Fare thee well, Sister Margaret. I loved her, but thank God she's she's what she she's where she wanted to be. She's where she worked for. And I thank God for Reverend Hampton. I certainly don't want to leave him out. Because I know that he loved Margaret. And the last six years of her life was happy years too. And my prayers go out to him and to the family. Thank God for what he was. I know I hear the girls say sometimes, he said, oh, don't worry about it, I got this. <laughs> and I love that. And I, I bless you tonight for the love that you gave Margaret. Because she was so deserving of it. To Lorenzo, to Mia, Michelle, I don't see Lorna and Deanna, but to their grandchildren. And just know that you had one great grandmother.
Margaret, and we were in uh, Jamaica. She was such a prayer warrior. And we were about going out and about. Sister Margaret was there with her altar. And she was a great prayer warrior. She was so special to me. Like someone said, they wanted her to say something. I was having a situation in my mind at one time. I said, well, Sister Margaret, what to do? She said, all I can tell you to do is pray. <laughs> those, were her, those were her famous words, you know. I appreciate her so much. I appreciate the family. I just love the family. I've never known her. I was telling me I've never known her. I could do that. When Rico was married to Michelle, I never known her to do anything, to say anything. I just appreciate her life. I appreciate the family. I appreciate each and every one of you. You all are, you all are awesome. I just love, I love Brother John. And I'm just so thankful that God that we meet you all. And that you brought me from Detroit and Southfield up here. And uh, my husband retired and moved up here. And I've just been so blessed. I really have been blessed. Um, I may be out of order, but I wanted to attempt to sing something. It took a miracle to hang the stars in place. It took a miracle to hang the world in place. Oh, but when he saved my soul, he cleansed and made me whole. It took a miracle of love and grace. God bless you.
Like this.